guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing okay. Hallie has just woken up from a mammoth nap. She is feeling refreshed, aren't you, darling? Look out the window. There you go. I've actually just had a morning this morning where I've been like going through all of my lists, my Christmas list, all the things I wanted to get everyone, um, and making sure that I'd either ordered them or they were on their way or like all of those kind of things. And then I was just like, I think I've actually just got everything. I need to stop looking. You know, when you just get to the point where you see something that's good, so you think, oh yeah, they'll love that. So I'll get that as well. And then it just ends up being a bit of an overwhelming situation when everyone's opening presents. To be honest with George, he's three. It's the first year he's gonna understand like, fully like what's going on with Santa and everything um and I just I really just want to make it as special as possible without like overwhelming him with everything and I just think it's really easy to do that and he's one of those kids that if he has too many toys in front of him he'll get a bit overwhelmed and all that kind of stuff so I want to try and avoid that um so I have got him everything I think there's like one more thing that I think we're going to order um and then other than that we are completely finished and I'm just going to tell myself like I don't need to order any more things I don't need to order any more do I he's going to have so much Hallie on the other hand bless her you've had all your presents already haven't you bar a couple I mean they're pretty much all like teething toys and weaning things so you know you've been teething like mad so you got those early didn't you you got those early. Her absolute favourite thing has been this little matchstick monkey. George had the exact same one, but in blue when he was her age. Do you love it? It's really good because it's got the, um, the like little arms that are really easy for them to hold. And then at the back, it's got the um, teething gel applicator. Has it? Do you want to hold that? There you go. There you go. Oh, yours. You've been absolutely loving that, haven't you? But yeah, I think we said in the last vlog, I don't think we're going to bother getting her any more bits for Christmas. Like, she's not even going to be six months old on Christmas Day. So I just think she's not going to know what's going on. I'm going to give her her sensory box that she's already, like, had bits and bobs from. But I'm going to give her her sensory box um, with, like, all the foil blanket and the flashing stuff and like all the feathers and everything and the ribbons and all that kind of stuff i'm gonna give her that on christmas morning um like when george is opening all of his presents so she's got something going on um i mean to be honest all the colors the lights and us all moving and laughing and smiling is gonna be like that's gonna be fun enough for her but um yeah i'll give her a sensory box as well but the reason i wanted to start today's vlog after Hallie woke up from her nap is because I put most of the Christmas presents as they've been getting delivered underneath our bed and Hallie obviously napped in our bedroom at the moment because her cot looks like like this um we're working on it but um yeah so she next naps in our room and her next to me crib and I wanted to go underneath our bed to basically just see just make sure that what I've got on my like notes on my iPhone marries up with what I've actually got in in real life um and then i guess next week i'll probably start maybe wrapping things maybe i mean i haven't got any wrapping paper but yeah one thing at a time but yeah now hallie is actually up i can go under our bed have a little look to see what the christmas gift situation is and i thought i would actually do a little you know what i got my three-year-old for christmas because he's obviously the main one that i've bought for i've bought a few things for ash a few things for a few other family members as well but mainly it's george because you know he's a star of the show when it comes to christmas um at the moment so i'm gonna open up the bottom of the bed and i'll show you everything okay so we've got all of these bits here that are christmas gifts and all of those bits up there that are christmas gifts obviously they're all just like in amazon boxes and things but the main thing that we get in george this year is a tony's box he is gonna absolutely adore this i've had so so many good reviews on it and it's three plus so i feel like he's the perfect age for it i've got loads of different tonys as well we've got him the gruffalo tony stick man snail and the whale Oh, we've got Spidey, obviously, his favourite at the moment. I was so excited when I saw this one. This is the Enchanted Wood. It's an Enid Blyton book, and it was my favourite story. Like, this series, um, The Enchanted Wood and The Faraway Tree, they were, like, my favourite books as a kid. George is probably... Well, I've tried to read it to him already. He's a little bit too young for the actual books. Um, I think they're, like, seven plus or something, but this i'm hoping he'll really enjoy it i've told him about moonface and saucepan man and all that kind of stuff so i'm hoping that he i'm hoping that he really likes the tony version and then obviously when he's older he can actually read the books and then i also got some horrible histories ones um again i don't know if he's too young for these or not but i just thought these were cool I, again i loved horrible histories growing up so terrible tudors and what's this one 
Rotten Romans as well. Um, so yeah, he's got plenty of Tonys to get him started. Obviously, he's got the Creative Tony as well. And on that one, I think you can record a little message for them. Either you can say something on it, or maybe you can get a grandparent to do it. George is absolutely obsessed with my mum, so I might ask her to do a little voice recording for it, and that would just be, just honestly, this is like the perfect gift for him. He loves the story. Bedtimes are tricky at the best of times for us, and um, I'm hoping that this is just going to just gonna do the trick even if it's just gonna help him like wind down a little bit and you know switch off that brain of his that's constantly going hopefully that tony's box is gonna do wonders for him so fingers crossed for his stocking i got him loads of little spider-man bath bits these are just all from home bargains he's gonna absolutely love these i was quite keen on getting some bits that we're actually gonna like use and like kind of this is obviously like a bath fizzer so that will be used in one go and then like we've got bar bubble bath and things like that because it's quite easy i think to just buy a lot of things for stockings because they're so cheap and like places like home bargains b and m but these kind of things we definitely use um and they're not gonna go to waste so it's still like yeah we'll definitely we'll definitely use these these are bath scissors in an egg cup oh my gosh he's gonna be mind blown so this is like bits for his stocking mainly george's stocking's quite small and i think that's kind of the standard like how we're gonna keep it for as long as we can i think when i was growing up i had like a sack a full-on sack of presents and then i had presents on the, underneath the tree as well and i feel like it can just get a lot and for now we're gonna we're gonna ease him into the the christmas mayhem i think um like i said we've got him like a fairly expensive gift as like his main present and then we're just gonna get like little bits we've got him like some upgraded flashcards so his flashcards that he's got downstairs are great they're really really good but they're mainly just like words and he knows all of them like he knows what dog and cat and like he knows all the words of those um whereas these ones are a little bit more advanced because they've got like the letter and then a picture um so you can say like j for jellyfish for example and that's what he's kind of moving on to um we were doing like the christmas decorations downstairs and it has like merry christmas on some on like a bunting thing um and he was doing all the sounds all the letter sounds it was like mm, eh, r. E, like and he was just sounding it out and I kind of like realized that he's actually probably you know getting to a point where he might start to understand like some letters um obviously he doesn't go to school for a little while yet um he doesn't go until 2025 um September 2025 because he's born in September so he's got a while but I figured it won't hurt to like start some bits like this and then I also grabbed him this orchard toys shopping list game I remember playing this in primary school so I'm really hoping he enjoys it Oh yes, screwball scramble to play. Oh my gosh, genuinely, this is like, this is like nostalgia in a box. I can't wait to play this with George. Do you remember you've got to like get the um, little ball bearing across the whole table against the clock? It's so much fun. I used to love that. And then I got him a couple of bits for his train set. So we got this Brio crane set. Again, it'll go with his train set perfectly and he's got plenty of space downstairs where his like train set and stuff goes to add this to his little collection but that wasn't good enough we also got him this one it's like a little it's basically another kind of crane but it moves iso containers and this one obviously has a little magnet on the top yeah i mean we probably didn't have to get him both it's fair to say but these were on offer on amazon at the time so we grabbed both like yeah he's gonna love them he's gonna absolutely love them he loves a crane he loves a digger like anything like that he's a classic boy like the stereotypes are real um but yeah he absolutely loves them and I also got him a little electric train so he's got loads of like normal trains like wooden trains that you push along on the wooden train set but then I thought I would get him this um actual electric one it's called the bullet trains it's supposedly the fastest toy train in the world which is pretty cool so as long as you've made the track perfectly this will go around which I just thought Christmas day activity with a toddler wooden train set electric train like you can't beat that you cannot beat that so what we've tried to do this year is definitely add to things that he's already got that he loves playing with i don't want to just overwhelm him like i said but we can add to things that he's already got like he's already got his train set we can add cool things to that to make it even bigger and better and then speaking of that i also got him these little play mags figures so these are to go with his magnetiles and um, we've got like a set of magnetiles, a set of unbranded magnetiles, and then they, there's also like play mags and stuff. So they're all they're all the same, like basically they're magnetic tiles that you can build towers with. And George is obsessed. It's his favourite thing to do. If he's like having a bit of a wobble or he's not sure about something, or if he's you know angry with me about something, if I say right, let's go and play with your magnetiles, everything's out the window. Like he's completely 
fine again and he just loves it he's so so into it and i love watching him like create little buildings i think little buildings are always massive um and anyway these are little play mag figures and they're little magnetic uh people that can go onto his like magnetic castles or towers or whatever he's made like he makes lots of bridges and dens and sometimes he makes like ramps for his cars and these can like if he does make a little castle or something he can pop like the little people in it and they can you know attach to the magnets um which i thought was really cool they've got magnetic legs and they've got bendable arms and their heads like rotate and stuff so i guess they're kind of like little lego figures but obviously magnetic and they work really really well with magnetiles so that's why i'm really excited for him to open then one to go with his bike i can't believe we haven't had one of these before like it's actually really bad that we've never got him one of these but a helmet for his bike but not any old helmet a proper dino helmet what three-year-old wouldn't love that i'm sorry like what amazing um so yeah this is his little helmet it's apparently like adjustable and stuff um from like three years old to seven so yeah hopefully that will fit him nicely and he's already got like a push bike um but it's like a balance bike he's been saying we've been reading a few like christmas books and it's all about santa what do you want on your christmas list all that kind of stuff and he's been saying that he wants a scooter like and it came out of nowhere i have no idea why that where that came from like i've never mentioned a scooter to him but he's just said that he wants a scooter and i was like oh my gosh i've got you everything so his granddad is actually gonna well sorry my granddad his great granddad is gonna get him a scooter um which is perfect so that can come like from santa um and obviously the helmet and stuff we can say that that's from santa as well so that would be really nice i actually think it's because we were reading a christmas book um and it is about two bears that give each other presents and one has a scooter and one has a bike and or a trike and he's obviously already got a bike and he maybe i think he just liked the idea of having a scooter i don't know um so yeah that's gonna be really cool when he opens that that's gonna be like perfect and then i've only got a couple more bits left this one is a projector that i got on amazon so it's kind of for bedtime maybe bath time as well um a little light projector and you can see that it, it projects like the sort of starry night or a nebula or something like that i thought that'd be really cool it's really compact and light um yeah um so i thought that would be a really nice one he likes things like that again i'm just trying to help him like wind down of an evening he'll find it really interesting really fun so hopefully yeah a little light projector will be nice plus it will mean that he doesn't have to have like a night light or anything he can just have the light projector on all night which will be nice and then just three little bits i got him this toddler knife set um so it's like a toddler cutting set it's all like plastic um knives so it's super safe but he can actually cut through like fruit and he can help me when i'm cooking and stuff he loves doing that kind of thing but obviously sometimes a little bit dangerous with knives and things around so i thought this would be a really nice one for him to like actually get involved with that process he already has his learning tower which he absolutely loves so like a little knife cutting set for him to actually get involved in the, in the process will be quite fun um and then i also got him these now these are um called orbeez or water beads i think so basically there's like a million different little um beads in here but this isn't like this doesn't do it justice so this is obviously like it before you've added water you put a few of these into a bowl or something and add a bit of water and they expand into these like water beads and you can play with them you can pour them into things you can like he would absolutely love it it's like a sensory like it's just such a cool little activity and i thought that it would be quite fun for him to actually see the process of adding the water to it them expanding and then you can do what he wants with the balls like whether that's pouring them into other things or making little shapes and like patterns and stuff with them i just thought that'd be a really nice one again this was like not even five quid on amazon there's so many in there that that's gonna yeah that's gonna last ages you can get them pre-made like pre-watered if that makes sense but they're so much more expensive and then you get much less so i just thought i would get these ones and i would explain to him like i'll show him how i work hello you the last thing i've got underneath the bed i'm pretty sure there's stuff in my car still but the last thing i've got in my bed is this um purple sand timer it's a five minute sand timer now if you have a toddler that struggles with well i don't know taking instructions or I don't know just anything really getting them to do things or telling them that something's over for example 
sand timers, guys. Let me tell you, the one thing that I've learned from nursery, from George going to nursery, is that sand timers work. They work so well, he responds so well to them. I've got a little sand timer app on my phone that he responds really well to, but sometimes it's like, I've, I have to give him my phone to like let him see the app and stuff. Whereas obviously if he's got his own sand timer, he can see when the time is up. This is a five minute one. I pre think maybe I should have got a two minute one, but five minutes is good enough, I think. Um, purple is his favorite color as well and he absolutely loves anything that's purple. So yeah, I thought I'd get him a little sand timer to help him if, you know, if I'm saying, you know, in five, we're leaving in five minutes, I'll pop the sand timer on um, so that he knows that he's got to turn the telly off in five minutes or he's got to stop playing in five minutes. Or if I'm like, it's time to get out of the bath now. I can say it's time to get out of the bath in five minutes once the sand timer is finished. Um, so like, and he listens as soon as that sand timer goes off. He actually listens. Like, I remember we went to soft play with him and his friends, and they wouldn't share the ball. They didn't, the boys didn't want to share the ball or something. And George kept running off with the ball, and he wouldn't like take turns. Um, and again, I put the sand timer wrap on, um, and it was his turn. Like until the sand timer went off, and then it was his friend's turn. And then when the friend was finished playing with it, I was like, right, put the sand timer up on. And, and when the sand timer was finished, the friend gave it back to George and it was just like really sweet. I just, it's magical. I think it's just because something else is telling them and it's not you. Um, but yeah, that is what I've got him so far. That's everything underneath the bed. I feel like there's a couple more bits in the car. I think I've got a couple more board games um, like to play on Christmas day and stuff. And I think like his friend had this toy snake thing that he was just obsessed with. So I got him that, it's like an electric snake that um, like goes slivers around the living room on its own um, and that kind of thing. But yeah, that's mainly what we've got. We haven't gone overboard. I think, like I said, we're trying to add to things that he's already got. Um, but the main thing is obviously his Tony's box. I have a feeling that this little one wants her bottle. So I'm gonna take her downstairs. And we'll try to do all of this up later. Yes, we will. Yes, we yeah. will. Yes. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I totally forgot to clear this up after last night. This is the reality of bedtimes at the moment. George actually wanted to read all of these books. Like, it was just ridiculous. This one's not even a book. This is actually just... Look at him as a baby. Um, this is actually just... Um, basically a little um, book of pictures that I put together of George's first year. Um, obviously these are just when he was like really tiny um, and then it goes on to when he was like one year old. Um, yeah, it's just our like 2020 to 2021 photo album and it's his favourite thing to go through and I just tell him about like what happened in the picture. So I was like, George was born, he came into the world, he was born in Winchester and blah blah and I would just like tell him a little bit about each picture and like what was happening. So like, obviously that was like when we got back home from hospital and we had a nap on the sofa together. It's like one of my favourite photos ever. And it's just me like, and I just absolutely adore that because it's just so, it was just so exactly what it was. That's the best thing about photos. And I feel like some of these photos are quite posed and actually that they're the least favourite photos of mine. Like I much prefer photos like this. I just go through and just like tell him what's happened. So obviously we came out from hospital. This was when we lived in Hampshire um, when he was first born. And then three weeks later we moved to um, Lincolnshire and that's where this photo was taken. So I was like telling him about like, how we moved and then he was a tiny baby and then we moved to a different place because of daddy's work and then I just like go through all of them and just like explain what was happening like this photo was taken during uh lockdown 2.0 or like tier three we were in tier three or something or other um so we did like a date night at home I put on makeup for the first time in like actual months so we had like a little date night we got George into a little shirt we we're making you know, the best of a bad situation. Um, and I was just telling them all about it and it's his favorite thing. It's honestly his favorite thing to do. If you've got a toddler, that is a very, very good little hack because obviously it's nice for you to go through photos um, and have those, but also they like it as a little story. Um, but anyway, yeah, the rest of these, I mean, we did not read all of these, obviously. Oh, this is that book I was telling you about though. The Perfect Present, these two bears buy each other presents and they swap their favorite, um, trike and their favourite um, scooter with the shopkeepers so that they can buy each other a flag and a bell which is really sweet. Um, but yeah, George wanted to read all of these books as well so I need to just quickly tidy these up before he gets back because I just, it just, to reset the room it'll probably end up like this like again. Um, but I did go through all of this cupboard earlier while Sally was napping. Um, I don't know why I didn't vlog it actually but these basically are all the toys that I've taken from downstairs or like that have been scattered around the house and I've put them in here for now because these are toys that George does not play with. However, 
this for example like if I got this out now he would definitely play with it but he is a little bit too old for it like he, if it was there all the time he wouldn't play with it and it takes up a whole like shelf on the cupboard downstairs so I've just brought it upstairs for now um, and I don't know whether to keep it or to donate it to either one of his playgroups or um, maybe to nursery or something if they want it. Although if I donated it to nursery, he would like be like, oh, that's mine. What the hell? Because he'd see it all the time. So maybe I could donate it to a playgroup or something. It's also got like the track and everything to go with it. But like I said, for now, I'm just going to keep it in here. Thankfully, we've got, we've got a load of storage here. I need to use it a little bit more effectively. But I'm thinking I've got a load of stuff from here and I've put that in Hallie's room. A lot of this was like, I don't know, we had a travel cot in here that I've popped in Hallie's room underneath her cot and I've just basically made this just toys um and books and stuff again these are books like more babyish books um and these are ones that Hallie can have when she's a little bit older um and like all these ones the mega blocks like these are all great toys and these this thing like this is doing us so well honestly George played this all the time from the age of like six months or maybe seven months all the way up to like two and a half like he absolutely loved it so i need to just figure out what we're going to do with the toys and how we're going to you know store them properly probably put them all onto two shelves rather than dispersed so much and i will probably keep a lot of them but like i say he doesn't play with them much at the moment i'm thinking a lot of them can be handed down to hallie and then some we can either donate or whatever like this elephant is just the cutest thing ever but when do kids even play with stuffed animals like i don't know george never really has but yeah i need to just sort all of these books get these books back into his bookshelf his little christmas tree his little christmas tree um and then just sort the situation out i'm really glad we've got all this storage in george's room because like i can just like store some toys away and stuff rather than having them all out in the living room at all times um and i do quite like to limit what we've got down in the living room at the moment because like i said i don't want to overwhelm him if he sees too much all the time he won't play with anything or he'll get overstimulated and you know toys will just be everywhere and he won't play with anything for more than five minutes um so having like specific toys that we actually get out yeah it, it seems to work for us anyway okay. right george what else goes in other than oats and bananas Just eggs. maybe some eggs pancakes there's like um banana and oats and stuff in it and george is playing with some of those water beads do you remember i told you yesterday about um the water beads that i got him for christmas 
yeah, I actually just tested a few out to make sure that they definitely worked. Added some water to these ones and they expanded and now they're like these little squishy, weird texture ball and these things. these are two little ones. That one's too little, is it? Are the yeah. other ones a little bit bigger? That's mm. funny. What's your favourite colour? Purple. Purple, yay. Yeah, it's George wanted to make purple pancakes this morning, but we didn't have the right colours to make. Noted for next time, we get blue food colouring or purple food colouring. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm going to make some Grinch pancakes. George is playing with his water beads. Um, Hallie's just gone down for a nap. She had, um, yeah, like the biggest poo ever. Uh, so now she's not going down for a nap. We're going to make Grinch pancakes. Let's do it, George. Why Should we do it with this spoon? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's do that. Right, would you like to get your learning towel? Are you okay up there? Um, okay. Before I saw that. Oh, after it's cooked, you could try some. Right, hopefully, these are going to be delicious. Would you like me to put blueberries in so there's a little bit of purple? Yeah. Yeah? Alright. A few blueberries. Mm, hopefully these are going to taste good. They're done and smothered in honey. I'm hoping that they're going to taste a little bit nicer than they look because obviously the colour dye, like the food colour in has gone, I don't know, just a bit like duller since it's been cooked. But George, you're enjoying them, aren't you? Your hands are so purple and so is your face. You've been eating the blueberries. Mmm, yeah. Mmm, yummy Grinch pancakes. Mmm, <sighs> okay. Right. You can have no don't put your finger in honey. Come on. Because you're gonna get sticky fingers and then everything's gonna stick to it. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, guys. Right. It's a bit later than when you last saw me, but both the kids are sleeping. I don't think that's happened. Like ever. I don't think that's ever happened. But they've been having a nap at the same time. Like George doesn't often nap, um, but this morning we were all up at five o'clock sometimes um honey was up at like 20 to 4 so she but oh this is the thing like she woke she didn't wake up the whole night she went to sleep at half past eight i fell asleep in george's bed around about that time ash put Hallie down for for the night and then i fell asleep in george's bed and ash didn't wake me up he fell asleep after he put Hallie down so i was in george's bed all night ash was asleep all night Hallie didn't wake up until 20 to 4 five so at 4 40 she woke up ash fed her and then he came in to wake me up and told me he was leaving for work because he leaves around five o'clock sometimes um and then i was like wait what so hallie just didn't wake up the whole night and he was like yeah but she's up for the day now i was like what the hell like that's mad so i don't know whether that's an absolute win well, i mean it definitely is because we all had a full night's sleep like even george didn't get up which is again unheard of so we all slept from about 8.30 until 20 to 5 in the morning. Like, it was madness. Um, but obviously where I got out of George's bed, he obviously heard us moving around and talking and stuff. So he woke up at 5. Hallie was obviously up. I was up. We were just all up. And since literally 5 o'clock, George has been non-stop. Like, he is just an absolute... Like, he is just in insane. He's like a Tasmanian devil. Like, he's just crazy from the moment he wakes up. When it comes to just being in the house, like, he's not, he's not a fan. And I've got to stay in today because I've got something being um, delivered that I really need to be here for. So, yeah, we're stuck in the house. Although, it's 11 o'clock now. It's 20 past 11. Hallie's been asleep for an hour, so I'm pretty sure she's going to wake up any moment now. But, yeah, like, they're asleep at the same time. I literally just had to give him a buff because he had, like, blueberries all over his face. He had honey going everywhere. Those green pancakes under his nails and things. I was like, right, you're just getting in the bath. Um, so I gave him a bath and wrapped him up in a towel. And it's like that whole sleep association thing because, obviously, that's the last thing we do before he goes to bed normally. Um, so he, like, was all snuggled up in his towel, stuck, stuck in his thumb, and I was like oh okay and I took him into his room just laid with him for a little bit and read him a story and he fell asleep and I was like oh my gosh I can clean the kitchen normally George doesn't nap so I'm a little bit lost as to what to do I think I'm just gonna get a cup of tea maybe a coffee actually because I feel like I need it and um and sit down and maybe like just regather my thoughts and uh go from there I feel like I'll feel refreshed after this you know what no I've just changed my mind I'm having a water I'm gonna pay my stupid penalty charge that I got when I was parking outside the doctor's the other day um I mean it's obviously my fault but 
still annoying because there was no parking at the doctors. There's never any parking at the doctors. There's only like a car park for the doctors, like the actual doctors that work there, which is fair enough. Um, but there's no parking for anyone that's coming there. And obviously, if you've got a kid and stuff, you've got the buggy, like you'd get in and out. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. There was literally so many people parked there as well. And then when I came out, it was literally this guy putting a ticket on my car and there was no other cars. So I was like, oh, oh, time to chill. Thank gosh. Oh, honestly, sometimes I think maybe I'm a little bit too negative on here maybe all i do is moan but i feel like you guys get it like you understand like everything i say comes with the unneeded caveat of how much i love my kids and how much i love being a mum like i absolutely adore it as much as you know the constantly being needed the constant mess the constant crying whining and just all of that stuff it comes with the unconditional unwavering love that you have like from someone and for someone it's amazing like I, I genuinely like cannot describe how much that means to me like it's just it's, it's everything it's it's literally everything I don't don't remember not having that I genuinely feel like it makes me who I am um but obviously yeah we're in the trenches guys let's not let's not be around the bush we are in the trenches this is a phase of life where things are particularly hard and it's weird because at the same time as absolutely loving every single stage it's like it's the best stage ever and the worst stage ever at the same time it's so strange like so George has turned three and he's like very much a three nature at the moment like sometimes things that he says I'm like oh my gosh are you 13 are you okay like it's crazy um and it's it's lovely because they're like discovering things his imagination is so amazing like I just I love playing with him and seeing where his imagination goes but um he's obviously yeah like he's a he's very like highly strung I would say like he's quite emotional and things like trigger him quite quickly um so yeah that obviously comes with its challenges especially when it comes to like dangerous things and, and things like that like trying to manage that sometimes is quite quite tricky and balancing obviously having Hallie and George and his emotions are quite heightened um quite a lot of the time I always say this but like I don't find the parenting part hard I find doing everything else around the parenting hard so if I could just literally play with George all day long like that would be the dream I'd play with George cuddle Hallie like about make her laugh and that would just be the best thing ever but it's everything else that goes with it it's the cooking it's the cleaning it's the sorting like life admin and you know doctor's appointments and bloody car fines parking fines and like just everything else that goes with it like life on top of keeping them happy um and like taking a second for yourself to like breathe I think sometimes it's like all of those things like it's like constant juggle we always talk about it, don't we like the constant juggle and I feel like you can't have everything all at once you can just sort of have everything like at a steady pace and it's fine like at the moment as soon as they've now just gone to sleep I feel totally fine I don't feel overwhelmed and when they come down it won't be like this big thing it's just like when it's constant in your face at all times is what it is but it's it's one of those things when you're the default parent it's it's hard it's like draining and you know it is relentless but it's also so beautiful like it's so beautiful how much he like we were playing we were like playing with the magnet tiles earlier this morning and um and we were making a big castle and stuff and he was just like mummy do you think it's beautiful i was like george i think it's gorgeous yes it's so beautiful and he was like do you think daddy will like it i was like yeah he would love it he was like it's amazing i was like yep yeah, it's amazing like he's so sweet um when he like stops and is a little bit in the calm zone he says the sweetest things like when he's constantly go 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 like he is his brain is rattling so fast that he literally I don't think even knows what he's saying and he's just shouting you don't know what he's saying he's just constant and obviously like great he's having loads of fun but wow I'm just like it overstimulates me to see him do that <laughs> But anyway, I think that just comes with having a boy. Um, if I'm totally honest, he's like the stereotypical what I thought having a boy would be like. And he has not disappointed. Let's just say that. Um, but I was in the shop the other day and this lady was like, oh, you wait until you wait until she's older. She'll be worse about like back chat and stuff. I was like, wow, OK, let's just like put the fear of God into me. But anyway, <laughs> right. Time to chill out until one of the kids get up. This is absolute... <laughs> right, 
Hallie's now awake. She just had her bottle. She's now sitting in her bouncer. Bless her. She woke up really nicely. She's had like a two hour nap. Absolutely needed that. Um, George is still asleep as well. And I think I'm probably going to have to go and wake him up because I don't want him to have a really long nap um, because it will just be a nightmare to get him down later. But um, I'll wake him up really nicely and I think maybe I'll take him out to the park or something because my delivery came eventually so my delivery came we're not stuck in the house anymore so i can go and take the kids out i think probably just getting outside or running around will do him some good i think yeah just getting coats and puddle seats on and wellies going to the park running around i mean that's one of george's favorite things to do it's just a little bit cold at the moment but since he's been going to forest school he's like really into layers so obviously at forest school they like make sure they put their layers on their waterproofs because they're out there all day like he absolutely adores it he used to like really begrudge putting on a coat and a hat and scarf and like things like that he would just hate it and never really want to do it and it, there would be meltdowns galore but now since forest school since someone else has told him that that's like that's like a good thing to do and he's i think experienced the cold he's been outside from pretty much nine o'clock until four o'clock every single wednesday so he goes and does that and since then he's been loving layers he's been loving his hat and his scarf and his he's got proper winter gloves and everything he's been absolutely loving it and he doesn't get cold anymore um and he's been telling me like i don't get cold if i wear my layers and i'm like yeah i had absolutely no doubt that he would adore forest school but i just love hearing the stories and stuff um but yeah now we've got all the gear um and everything i think yeah that's probably what we'll do this afternoon wrap up warm and go to the park <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> George saw a house with Christmas lights, um, so we've done a little detour on the way to the park. Um, and we're looking at all of the Christmas lights, and they look so good. This is like the neighbourhood where they go all out. This is the neighbourhood we went trick or treating in as well. The neighbourhood that I wish I could afford to live in. <laughs> is it really cool, George? No, it's George, what do you want for Christmas? Um, my. Scooter. You want a scooter? Oh. Lights on the scooter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe we can ask Santa if we see him this year. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so cold. Look honey in her hat. <laughs> okay, so the challenge is always how do I get George away from the park? This is the challenge. I have not mastered this yet. Okay, okay, we're having a race home now. George, I'm gonna be the winner. <laughs> I'm winning, aren't I? And you could both be the winner. Oh yeah, we'll both be the winner. That's a great idea. If you hold my hand, if you hold, if you hold my hand, we can both be the winner. Yay, it's a great idea. All right, we're back. I've just transferred Hallie from the carrier. This is why I love this carrier because it's magnetic. I literally haven't even taken my coat off yet. Transferred Hallie from being asleep in the baby carrier. Literally just unbuckled that, transferred her down, and I've literally not even taken my coat off. I've got Georgia's nap. Now it's time for me to take my coat off, get settled, and then I'm going to make us both hot chocolate, and then we're going to watch Monsters Inc. Oh yes, oh yes. Had a successful day out in the winter like no one's crying no one's cold it was really nice we held hands on the way home i mean it was beautiful it was lovely hallie fell asleep eventually and now it's time for hot chocolate and i feel like it's well deserved <laughs> Okie dokie, time for hot chocolate and monsters in. Isn't that amazing? Right, are you ready? In Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monsters in. Monsters in. Monsters in. Monsters in. Here's a fact that I didn't ask to know. Someone told me the other day that Monsters Inc. is going to be 23 years old in January. Alright. I mean, wow, 23 years old. That makes me feel old and I'm only 25. But I remember watching it like when I was like George's age and I loved it. And now he's watching it and he loves it. I love it.
Get ready for the best quote in a Monsters Inc. It's literally in the first five minutes. Right there, Lip. Hey, Mom, can make big calls. So George and I are having a little cuddle. I think I'm going to leave the vlog here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope we'll see you in the next one. Bye. We'll be chilling and having a good, good time.